What makes people make that appointment? What makes people follow up? What makes people get that mammogram and that colonoscopy? It is fundamentally that relationship. And so whatever piece of the puzzle you're on, you want to ensure that you are not getting in the way of that relationship, whether it is the implementation of AI, whether it is the way you are moving forward with your EHR initiative, whether it's the way you're thinking through your telemedicine strategy. And I'll give you some simple examples, right? With the EHR, for example, we solved three problems and we created five new ones. We literally launched a scribe service. I mean, the EHR is supposed to document and then it did it so badly and it was so non-intuitive to doctors, we now put a third person in the examining room. Meanwhile, the doctor is asking you about your family history, your sexual history, your alcohol, tobacco use, drug history. We changed the relationship, right? And we largely made it an inefficient workflow. I think we have an opportunity to fix that, particularly when it comes to generative AI. And when it comes to things that are not so sexy to talk about, <clears throat> right, Grant? Yeah. Clinical decision support, prior authorization. That's, that's the friction. That's the friction in healthcare. And if we remove that friction, we will actually improve the relationship and drive those efficiencies of the economics, right? The economics, we can see more patients. We can generate more revenue. We can generate more valuable visits, right? And then finding the right places for telemedicine, which is also very efficient if done correctly, if it's for the right specialty and the right type of patient. So I think that's the next era of healthcare transformation. It requires true healthcare leadership and also a reflection from the technology. We've had technology around for a long time. We've had AI around for a long time. So what are the lessons learned? 